Welcome into this Monday episode of Wilt Fong Whip Around. I'm Grace Remington, joined by our director of recruiting at 24-7 Sports, Steve Wilt Fong. We are two days away from National Signing Day and just six players in the top 247 remain uncommitted before signing day. So we are going to start off with one of them, the top athlete in the nation, and that is Nicholas Harbour. Now, Steve, at this point, we know his top four schools, but he's coming off a visit to Oregon. What did you hear about that? Yeah, I think that Oregon remains in really good position for Nicholas Harbor coming out of an official visit to Eugene that he took with his dad and sister. Among others, it was his first time visiting Oregon as a recruit, but he's been out there to Eugene to run in track meets before. Look, Oregon, they have the nation's number 10 recruiting class right now. They have a chance to move all the way up to number four if they land Nicholas Harbor and Roderick Pleasant, with, which I think is very viable right now here with two days to go in the process. And Harbor's visit to Oregon went as well as it could from what I'm told. Uh, I think that there's some that believe it's the best opportunity for him with regarding track and football. Again, this is a young man that has aspirations of running in the Paris Olympics in two years, got a chance to go over to the Phil and Penny Knight Center. He ate lunch with Oregon's president. He attended a basketball game, uh, obviously got an exclusive track tour. He posted his visit to Hayward Field uh, on his Instagram Uh Oregon had a track meet at Texas Tech, but their track coach stayed back to spend time with Nicholas Harbor to show you what kind of recruit he is uh, for Oregon on that side of the fence. And look, when I asked uh, Nicholas Harbor's dad what the, what excited them most about Oregon coming into the visit, he, he said Nike right away. So uh, certainly a lot of Nike uh, pizzazz with, with, with this visit, uh, but obviously spent a lot of time with Coach Landing and his staff. Uh, certainly you eat a lot uh, when you're on these visits, but I think that Oregon continues to be in really good position for Nicholas Harbor right now uh, as this recruiting process comes to an end. Now, uh, South Carolina, yeah, I know there's a lot of confidence around the Gamecocks in, in Columbia. Uh, no program has probably done a better job of building relationship with Nicholas Harbor from the staff to the recruits in the class. Um, and, and they have a track coach that certainly uh, uh, has a great resume in Curtis Fry, Maryland, and, and the Terrapins close to home. Uh, um, we wrote about their, their track coach and, and, and his history of being the 2012 Olympics track coach, ran in, in the Olympics himself in 88 and in, in 1992. Um, and, and, and so Maryland uh, still hanging in there in that recruitment in, in Michigan as well. But I think that there's some really good momentum here with, with Oregon coming out of the official visit. We'll see what happens with Nicholas Harbor now as he can really hunker down and go into decision mode. All right, another recruitment that everyone's been tracking closely is that of Jaden Rashada, rated the number six quarterback in this cycle. We know he's made plenty of decisions and indecisions. The last one coming this Wednesday, he had an unofficial visit to TCU on Sunday. So what's the latest with him? Yeah, I was on the Horn Frogs campus this weekend, and things have really been picking up with TCU since he was let out of his letter of intent with uh, Florida. And I think that uh, his past relationship with Kendall Bryles, the new OC, has put TCU in prime position here. Got a chance to go to TCU's campus and spend a lot of time around Sonny Dykes and talking to people that spent time with Jaden Rashada. The feedback was all positive. Uh, it sounds like he really enjoyed his visit. Uh, said all the right things to people when he was on campus, but wants to go home, not make any emotional decisions. You know, Arizona State was on campus there two weekends ago. They remain a factor. Uh, the Sun Devils have done a good job recruiting Rashada and his family there. Uh, but I think that uh, there's reason to believe around TCU's campus that they still have a good chance of landing Jaden Rashada here at the end of the process after talking to some people that spent time with him on his visit. And I also think that the city of Dallas being in that Fort Worth area and the excitement of just being in that bigger city uh, with all the opportunities that uh, young men have uh, from NIL standpoints and everything uh, uh, with Dallas Fort Worth is exciting as well. All right, and we had a handful of commitments coming out of this weekend. So let's do a Wilt Fong whip around here. Catch us up on the latest where everyone's going. Yeah, there were several young men that announced their college decisions over the weekend. Let's highlight five uh, big time commitments that happened over the weekend. In the 2024 class, you have a Darius Hayes. Um, you have a Darius Hayes, top 247 linebacker from Largo, Florida, who announced his commitment to Florida. The Gators have the number eight recruiting class in the country right now in 2024. And linebacker is a big need for them. Uh, Darius is, is a young man that um, 
had had 120 tackles, has over 100 tackles the last two seasons, a hard hitter uh, on film, a, a space eater that can also drop in coverage, nicknamed Hitman. You know, talking to someone around Gainesville, they feel that they just landed one of the best players in the country, not uh, only uh, a linebacker, but just in general. And he joins a class that includes Miles Graham, another top 247 player at the position uh, who's a hard hitter. Uh, second level defender, a tone setting type player, just like a Darius Hayes. And this is a Florida team that had the nation's number 97 defense in the country this past year. Uh, and I think they uh, recruited some really nice pieces in the 2023 class, especially along the defensive line with Kelby Collins and Cameron James leading that charge. And then Jakeem Jackson in the secondary, but they're going to need some big second level help here. They landed some guys in the transfer portal uh, to help uh, be a bandaid or, or a gap filler there. Uh, but 2024 linebacker recruiting Florida needs to have one of the best classes in the country at that position. And so far so good with Hayes and Graham in the fold. How about Georgia adding to the nation's number one recruiting class, maybe the fastest player in the class, Dwight Phillips, a running back from in-state there. He's got 4-2 speed in the 40-yard dash, 10-4, 100-meter uh, speed. He's a decisive downhill runner that just needs a crease, and he's got a chance to score. And he obviously is a dangerous runner on the perimeter with that speed. He's an angle eraser, but he can also cut and make people miss uh, Georgia landing Dwight Phillips this weekend. And they also could potentially flip running back Chauncey Bowens from Florida, who also visited down the road. Clemson, they hosted 24 prospects this weekend. We'll have more on that later in the show, Grace. Uh, but they landed a commitment. Champ Thompson, a defensive lineman from Meadow Creek High there in the state of Georgia, a long, big body defensive lineman that plays across the front on the prep level. And you can see the twitch and power potential. Clemson has the nation's number 15 recruiting class. And talking to Thompson's coach, his athleticism and size combination and desire to be great are two things that really stand out about him. Oregon, we talked about them. They have a chance to finish with a top five class in 2023. They're already in the top 10 in 2024, nation's number seven class. Jackson Jones, the fifth to commit out of Arizona. He might be my favorite player in the class so far. He's one of the most disruptive players out West. He wins with quickness, strong hands, power. He had 22 tackles for loss and 17 sacks as a junior. Another player that visited Oregon over the weekend that I still really like Oregon for is top 247 linebacker Justin Williams from the Lone Star State. And then Wisconsin. Top 247 tight end Grant Steck, six foot six, 230 pounds from Illinois. Plays in like a Vera Wishbone type attack on Friday nights, but he lines up attached to the line of scrimmage. They flex him out wide. He can stretch the field as a pass catcher. He blocks, he makes hustle plays. He runs hard after the catch. He's a really nice pickup for Wisconsin, Luke Fickle and company early in the cycle. All right, let's keep it going with news on the 2024 class. Colorado coming off a big recruiting weekend. The reviews are out, and they are overwhelmingly positive. So, Steve, what can you tell us about Deion Sanders' first junior day in Boulder? Yeah, well, I can tell you right now that Colorado, they're, good, they're full in on recruiting some of the best players in the country, and returns are strong from the experience that these young men had in Boulder. Let's start with five-star receiver Ryan Wingo. Talk to his father. Uh, during the visit. And first, they, they love seeing the snowfall on the mountains. They like the ambiance of Colorado's football program, but certainly uh, they called it, his dad said, is a great staff. He had some pre-existing relationships with guys like Tim Brewster and Nick Williams, but getting around Deion Sanders, Sean Lewis, and the rest of the staff excites the Wingo camp about that potential offense in, in Boulder. Uh, quarterback Daniel Kalins, a, a young man that has an early offer from Colorado that said it, it was a great visit. The number one offensive tackle in the 24-7 sports recruiting rankings, Brandon Baker, said the environment was great. A lot of people just talked about the family feel uh, uh, that's already around the program. He was one of them and how they're ready to work. DeAndre Robinson's a four-star defensive lineman from the state of Florida who talked about the winning mindset on campus. Danny Okoye from Oklahoma, six foot five, 240-pound defensive lineman. Loved the passion on campus. The energy is what Marcus Gorey Jr. talked about. And, and so uh, uh, Boo Carter, four-star from Tennessee, loved his visit. Some of the top players in the country in 2025 were blown away, including number one running back in the land, Jordan Davidson. He talked about the development, the player development that the program has, not only for you as a player, but off the field, Jaden Hudson, a safety, the number one player in California in 2025. Yeah, he also talked about the mountaintop views and everything, but just loved the vibe of, of Coach Deion Sanders and Coach Prime. And so, look, with Colorado, 
it's a program that they are going to go after the best players in the country. They're going to try and get them to campus and go from there in this first junior day under this new staff uh, paid major dividends for them. A player that there's no, there's no question that they uh, uh, love a lot is Jawan Johnson, a four-star athlete from the state of Louisiana. I think that they view him as a guy uh, that could be a difference maker on either side of the ball, but he called it a special place. And I, I know that's someone that they think is a very special prospect, and, and, and they certainly moved the needle with Jawan Johnson. I love hearing all their comments about the snow and the ambiance. It really is a beautiful place. Uh, that Colorado class currently ranks 19th. Clemson's 2024 class ranks 15th, and the Tigers also hosting a junior day. Walker White, the number eight quarterback in the class, was one of the recruits to leave a glowing review. So what can you tell us about the impressions that Dabo Sweeney left on him and others? Yeah, so I'm told that Walker White was the last prospect, him and his family, to leave Dabo Sweeney's house on Saturday night following uh, a junior day where Clemson really only invites their top targets, 24 guys, all committable offers, all guys that they covet and would love to have helping them win their next ACC championship and beyond. Walker White was a young man that they offered uh, towards the end of uh, 2022. They get him to campus. Ole Miss had been perceived the early leader for him. He's been to Oxford several times. But I think the momentum's with Clemson right now. Coming out of that visit has a longstanding relationship with Garrett Riley, who comes from TCU, loves Coach Riley, loves the offense, but really just loves the culture of Clemson's program. I think he felt like he really fit in with Clemson. And I wouldn't be surprised if a decision isn't too far off for Walker White, uh, as he's been able to make a lot of rounds to schools like Auburn and Baylor as well. But I think Clemson really hit the mark with Walker White and his family. Five-star linebacker Sammy Brown, the number one player in the country at his position, said the visit just reinforced what he already loved about Clemson. Look, this, that battle is going to be a slobber knocker on the trail between Georgia and Clemson. Uh, he's very familiar with both programs, been visiting and camping out at them for an extremely long time. Gets back to Clemson, has another terrific experience with the Clemson staff. He loves the culture. K.J. Bolden, number one safety in the country, number two player overall, could also play uh, receiver on the next level. He's already talking about coming back to Clemson for a spring practice in March. Again, you got Georgia in the middle of that one, Ohio State, uh, Tennessee, uh, some others in there for K.J. Bolden. But uh, those are two five stars that that Clemson's uh, way in it for. Another good, uh, another good visit for each of them to campus. A couple other guys to highlight, Heaven Brown Schuler. Uh, I think Clemson's the one to beat for the top 247 defensive lineman from the Peach State. Darian Mayo is another guy who came down from only good counsel who, who loved his visit. But there's a lot of reaction on the Clemson 247 site. They hosted a lot of elite players. They typically land at least half the guys that visit on a weekend like this. So uh, uh, Clemson definitely moved the needle with a lot of top targets with their elite junior day. And the top prospect in the nation, Dylan Rayola, coming off a visit to USC. Sounds like he and his family had a really great time. We know it's always important for the family to like these programs as well. So what did you learn from his visit? Yeah, well, this was a big visit for his mom, too. She had never been there before. He had visited in the past with his father, but his mom loved it. Uh, uh, he said that they took great care of her, showed her around the campus. He said his mom was blown away, loved her time there, and he was thankful uh, that he got to bring his mom with him this time to to see it. But he spent all day with Lincoln Riley. And we know that uh, Lincoln Riley is the lead recruiter on a lot of prospects, but certainly the quarterback and, and, and the guy that they've targeted in 2024 is Dylan Rayola. And uh, uh, he, Dylan said it was very special uh, to spend the day with him there. They love his track record developing quarterbacks, of course, with the Heisman Trophy winners, the number one overall picks in, in the NFL draft. And, and Dylan said, I just love watching and hearing how he teaches his quarterbacks and how he operates his offense. So uh, he's going to take some more visits in March. You know, Nebraska sent nine assistant coaches into the school on Friday. That was a big needle mover. He's starting to build a great relationship with Matt Rule, Coach Satterfield, and that new staff in Nebraska. Uh, obviously, his dad was an All-American there. His dad's numbers retired there. His uncle's the coach at Nebraska. There's a lot of family ties to that university. But Matt Rule's track record of building Temple into a conference champion, rebuilding Baylor, uh, um, they're excited about his potential at Nebraska. My crystal ball is on Georgia for Dylan Rayola, so certainly the Bulldogs are in a great spot for him too. Oregon's in the, in the mix. He's going to take some visits in March. But USC had a great visit uh, here in January, and we'll see if, uh, when he gets back out to see the Trojans again as well. 
All right, let's do some quick hitters heading into National Signing Day because we know a lot of these recruits signed during the early signing period, but there are still some really highly rated players that we need to keep an eye on. So who should we be watching this Wednesday? Yeah, so top 247 offensive tackle Chimdi Ono out of Dund Dundalk, Maryland will be making his decision, a recent riser in our player rankings. He's the number 13 offensive tackle in the country, number 149 overall. Took an official visit to Ole Miss this weekend. I still think Penn State and Michigan State are best positioned for Ono until someone tells me different. I would probably lean towards Penn State right now for him. They had him on campus the weekend of January 13th. The Nittany Lions have the nation's number 14 recruiting class right now and boast one of the best offensive line halls in America. When you look at Javen Williams and Alex Birchmeyer, uh, Alex Birchmeyer, the number two interior offensive lineman in the country. Javen Williams, the number six offensive tackle. But those are guys that are versatile and can play anywhere across the front. And then Anthony Donka is a four-star out of the state of Virginia who also brings some position vers versatility. And if Penn State's able to add uh, Ono to that mix, it would certainly be a heck of an offensive line haul for a program that I think is right on the cusp to compete for the college football playoff. And then Michigan State, Coach Cap. And those guys do as good a job as anybody recruiting offensive linemen. Michigan State has the nation's number 25 recruiting class right now. Uh, I heard he had a really good visit to East Lansing two weekends ago. And Michigan State has given him a lot to think about alongside Penn State down the stretch here as Mel Tucker looks for another top 25 recruiting class. And a bonus nugget there on the Spartans. They had five-star defensive linemen in the 2024 class. David Stone back on campus this weekend. Another wonderful experience. This time he's able to bring his family two weekends in a row. He's in East Lansing. Uh, he just feels so comfortable there, says it reminds him of home, says everything stands out about the Spartans. No question Michigan State's at the top, if not near or, – or, or, no question Michigan State's near the top, if not at the top for David Stone following another visit. He looks forward to getting to Miami and Texas A&M, among other places in the future. All right, lots of news on the way. Remember to subscribe to 247sports.com and to the 247 Sports YouTube channel so you do not miss a single update as we wrap this 2023 recruiting cycle. We will be back here on Wilt Fong Whip Around on Friday, so send in those mailbag questions. You can tweet them at us at 247 Sports, and we'll get your questions answered on the show. For C. Wilt Fong, I'm Grace Remington. Thank you for watching, and have a great week.